General Principles of Pharmacology Dosage Forms of Drugs A patient suddenly develops upper abdominal pain and attends a private clinic to relieve pain. The doctor of that clinic advises the patient to chew an antacid tablet, aluminum hydroxide 325 mg. But the pharmacist gives him a tablet, which is 1,200 mg in weight. Do you think is there any communication gap between the doctor and the pharmacist? Certainly not. That tablet contains 325 mg of aluminum hydroxide as an active ingredient. To prepare that tablet some other pharmacologically inert substances are added which are called excipients. These are mannitol, sodium saccharin, starch paste, peppermint oil, magnesium stearate, corn starch, methyl cellulose, and orange. Here, aluminum hydroxide is a drug. The active ingredient sometimes represents only a small amount of the total weight of a tablet, for example, digoxin, or capsule. A drug for injection requires a fluid vehicle of varying complexity. The purpose of using these excipients is to solubilize, suspend, thicken, dilute, emulsify, stabilize, preserve, color, or flavor the drug. All drugs are not used in the same amount. They vary in amount. Most of them are prescribed in milligram quantities. For example, paracetamol is administered in 500 milligrams whereas ethanol estradiol is administered in 0.05 milligrams. That is, the former drug is 10,000 times greater than the latter drug. It is a difficult task to ensure the supply of 500 mg of paracetamol accurately to the patient without dosage formulation. If 505 mg of paracetamol is administered instead of 500 mg, it will not create any problem. But severe adverse effects develop after administering 5.05 mg of ethanol estradiol instead of 0.05 mg. Thus, how can you ensure the availability of an accurate small amount of ethanol estradiol? Dosage formulation has solved this problem. There are four varieties of dosage formulations solid, semi-solid, liquid or gaseous. In addition, liposome-based formulations are promising and will be the future drug delivery system for a lot of drugs. Why so many dosage forms? It is quite natural to arise a question why do we use so many dosage forms? The answer is simple. A single formulation does not allow us to administer a drug via different routes. For example, a drug in tablet form is suitable for oral, swallow, administration. But it cannot be administered by the parenteral route until it is diluted in a sterile solvent. Even you cannot administer a tablet into the rectum. Thus, suppository, specially designed formulation, is prepared for administration into this route. The physiochemical properties of a drug can easily be altered by different dosage forms. It conceals the bitter, salty, or offensive taste or odor of the drug. The damage of drugs from moisture can also be prevented. It protects the drug from the destructive influence of gastric acid after oral administration. The adverse effects are reduced. Different dosage forms provide time-controlled drug effects and increase the acceptability of the drug. For example, metronidazole has a bitter taste. This can be overcome by making the metronidazole tablet film coating. Film coated tablet also prevents the damage of a drug from moisture. Benzyl penicillin is not administered orally, as it will be destroyed within the stomach by gastric juice. So, it is always administered parenterally. In the case of an enteric coated tablet, the active ingredient will not be released within the stomach when swallowed. So, the drug that damages the gastric mucosa will not be able to get the chance to produce any adverse effect on the stomach.
Everybody does not like to swallow drugs in tablet form. The liquid dosage form of a drug is more acceptable to children as well as elder patients. Solid dosage form. Solid dosa. GE forms include tablet, capsule, powder, granule, and suppository. Among them, tablet and capsule are mainly used and are administered orally. The powder is the oldest dosage form which nowadays has been replaced by tablet and capsule. Tablet Tablet is a solid dosage form in which powder, crystalline, or granular form of the drug is compressed in a disc or molded. It is the most frequently used means of administering the drug. Most of the tablets are administered orally. However, tablet for application is a solution. Vaginal use, for example, clotrimazole, sulfathiazole, or external use, for example, potassium permanganate, is also available. An oral tablet is designed to release the drug within the gastrointestinal tract for absorption into circulation. It may be used for a local effect, antacids, anthelmintics. Tablet is usually swallowed with a cup of water, about 250 milliliters. Nowadays most of the tablets are of compressed type. Compression may be single or multiple times. In case of multiple compression, a tablet within a tablet, the inner tablet behaves like the core and the outer portion is the shell. What is the difference between the compressed and the molded tablets? The molded tablet is softer than the compressed one. The molded tablet dissolves rapidly when administered by placing it under the tongue. To make the tablet well acceptable to the patient and easier to swallow, the tablet is prepared in different shapes and sizes. The tablet is usually discoid in shape. It may be available in other shapes such as round, oval, triangular or elliptical. Sometimes the tablet may be capsule-shaped, called caplet. Caplet is easily swallowed. The upper and lower surfaces of a tablet may be flat or convex. The tablet may be scored or grooved on a single side in halves or quadrants to permit the fairly accurate breaking of the tablet for the administration of a partial amount. Sometimes the tablet may be marked with a trade name with or without the amount of the active ingredient. Tablets are produced in different colors to make them further distinctive. To make a tablet it is necessary to use water, which may cause loss of potency of the drug. Composition of tablet. The tablet contains not only the active ingredients but also contains several inert substances such as diluent, filler, binder, adhesive, disintegrant, lubricant, lubricating agent, coloring agent, sweetening, and flavoring agents. Diluent. Pharmacologically inert substance is used as a diluent when the amount of an active ingredient is inadequate to produce a tablet. For example, it is impossible to make a digoxin tablet of 0.25 mg without adding a diluent. Well-known diluents are dextrose, lactose, starch, powdered sucrose, microcrystalline cellulose, sodium chloride, dicalcium phosphate, calcium sulfate, and kaolin. The selection of diluent is based partly on the experience of the manufacturer in the preparation of other tablets and also on its cost, and compatibility with the other formulative ingredients. Calcium salt should not be used in the preparation of tablet or capsule of tetracycline, because the calcium interferes with the absorption of tetracycline from the gastrointestinal tract. Most of the manufacturers prefer lactose as a diluent, because of its solubility and compatibility. Microcrystalline cellulose is also preferred, because of its compactability, compatibility, and uniformity of supply. Binder Binder is the substance used to cause the adhesion of powder particles in tablet granulations. 
It keeps the tablet intact after compression and imparts the hardness of the compressed tablet. The commonly used binders are starch, acacia, tragacanth, gelatin, liquid glucose, sucrose, lactose, povidone, ethylcellulose, carboxymethylcellulose, and methylcellulose. The amount of bin dur used has considerable influence on the characteristics of tablet. The use of excessive or strong binders makes the tablet hard and will not easily disintegrate. Disintegrant Any substance that is added to the active ingredients of the tablet to facilitate breakdown into small particles within the gastrointestinal tract after swallowing is called disintegrant. So, disintegrant facilitates dissolution. Corn and potato starch, sodium starch glycolate, criscarmelis, carboxymethyl cellulose calcium, and microcrystalline cellulose are used as disintegrators. They swell or expand on exposure to moisture and affect the rupture or breakup of the tablet after it enters the gastrointestinal tract. Most of the manufacturers prefer criscarmelis and sodium starch glycolate, 5 to 20 percent, as disintegrants for their rapid action. Lubricant. Lubricant prevents the adhesion of tablet materials to the surface of dyes and punches. The commonly used lubricants are magnesium stearate, calcium stearate, zinc stearate, stearic acid, purified talc, and mineral oil. Lubricants except purified talc are used at a concentration of less than 1%. Purified talc may be used up to 5% of the tablet. The use of the excessive amounts of lubricant should be avoided since it may deleteriously affect the tablet. Colorant Sometimes the coloring agent is used to impart elegance to tablet, which also helps to identify the different types of tablets. The coloring agents are brilliant blue, indigoline, fast green, erythrocene, tartrazine, and caramel. Flavorant Flavorant is generally used to all lozenge, chewable, and effervescent tablets to impart a pleasant flavor. The commonly used flavorants are anise oil, cinnamon oil, cocoa, menthol, orange oil, peppermint oil, and vanillin. Sweetening agent. Sweetening agent is generally used to all lozenge, chewable, and effervescent tablets. The commonly used sweetening agents are mannitol, lactose, dextrose, sucrose, glycerin, sorbitol, and saccharin. Types of tablets. Tablet may be uncoated or coated. Uncoated tablet is either a chewable tablet, effervescent tablet, lozenge tablet or sublingual tablet. Coated tablets are enteric coated tablet, film coated tablet, sugar coated tablet, and modified release tablet. A broken section of a coated tablet shows a core, which is surrounded by a continuous layer of a different texture. A coated tablet is expensive and a broken coated tablet should not be swallowed. The rate of drug administration into the systemic circulation is slowest. Then, why a tablet is coated? It helps to a. protect the active ingredients from air, moisture, light. b. Mask the unpleasant tastes, odor, and c. Improve the appearance. Chewable tablet. The tablet is intended to disintegrate smoothly in the mouth at a moderate rate, either with or without actual chewing. Usually, mannitol is added to make the tablet pleasant tasting, no bitter or unpleasant after taste, a cool taste and mouth feel. Sometimes, other sweetening agents, such as sorbitol, lactose, 
dextrose, and glucose, may be substituted for part or all of the mannitol. Antacids, cimetidine, albendazole, and vitamin tablets are usually prepared as chewable tablets. It is given to the children who have difficulty in swallowing and to the adults who dislike swallowing. Effervescent tablet. The tablet that contains acid substances and carbonate or hydrogen carbonate that react rapidly in the presence of water to release carbon dioxide. Sodium bicarbonate, citric acid and tartaric acid are added to the active ingredients to make the tablet effervescent. This preparation makes the tablet fast disintegration and solution when added to water and makes it palatable. This preparation is taken as the effervescence subsides. Aspirin, ranitidine, etc. are available as an effervescent tablet. Lozenge tablet. Lozenge, also known as troche, less frequently called pastille, is a disc-shaped, solid dosage form of a drug intended to be slowly dissolved in the oral cavity to get localized effects. There is no disintegrating agent. Thus, a tablet is harder than an ordinary tablet and dissolves or disintegrates slowly within the mouth. Suitable sweetening, sugar, coloring and flavoring agents must include in this formulation. Gum is used to give strength and cohesiveness to the lozenge and facilitate the slow release of the active ingredient. The drugs used for lozenge tablets are nistatin, clotrimazole, benzocaine, dextromethorphan, phenylpropanolamine, etc. This type of tablet is convenient to the patient when compared to the necessity of swishing an oral suspension in the mouth. Sublingual tablet. The drug which is destroyed or inactivated in the gastrointestinal tract but can be absorbed through the mucosal tissue of the oral cavity is usually given in this formulation. The tablet is placed below the tongue for fast release of the drug, dissolve within 1 to 2 minutes. Nitroglycerin is prepared in this formulation. Enteric coated tablet. Some drugs are destroyed by gastric juice or irritate the stomach. These two factors can be overcome by coating the tablet with cellulose acetate phthalate. This polymer is insoluble in gastric contents but readily dissolves in intestinal contents. So, there is a delay in the disintegration of dosage form until it reaches the small intestine like a coated tablet. The enteric coated tablet should be administered in the whole form. Broken or crushed form of the enteric coated tablet causes destruction of the drug by gastric juice or irritation to the stomach. The enteric coated tablet is comparatively expensive. Other substances used for enteric coating are shellac, hydroxypropyl, methylcellulose phthalate, and polyvinyl acetate phthalate. Enteric coated tablets are aspirin, bisacodyl, etc. Film coated tablet. The tablet is covered with a thin layer of a water insoluble or water soluble polymer capable of forming a film over the tablet. This coating is ruptured in the gastrointestinal tract. The film is generally colored and has the advantage over sugar coating in that it is more durable, less bulky, and less time consuming to prepare. Sugar coated tablet. The tablet that contains active ingredients of unpleasant taste may be covered with sugar coating to make it more palatable. This type of tablet should be administered in the whole form. Otherwise, the patient will experience the unpleasant taste of the active ingredient. Disruption of the coating is the rate-limiting step in the absorption of the drug. Modified release tablet. Modified release tablet is commonly referred to as controlled release, sustained release, 
Time release, slow release, sustained action, prolonged action, extended action, or rate controlled tablet. It is either uncoated or coated. Modified release tablet is prepared in various ways. Conventionally prepared granules are mixed with granules either coated with a poorly soluble material or containing solution retarding additives. The granules are then compressed together. Thus, an initial release of the drug is obtained from the conventionally prepared granules, followed by a sustained release from the treated granules. Modified release tablet may be formed by preparing a multiple layer tablet, in which the conventional and treated granules are located in separate layers. It prolongs the effect of the drug and thus reduces the frequency of administ. Ration of the drug, aminophilin and diclofenac are used as modified release tablets. In the case of an elementary osmotic pump, the drug is present in a solid core surrounded by a semi-permeable, polymer membrane that selectively allows water to enter the core. Water entering from any part of the gastrointestinal tract gradually dissolves the drug. Since the internal dimensions of the tablet are fixed, the resulting pressure within the core forces the drug solution into the gut lumen through a laser-drilled small orifice. The rate at which this osmotic pump releases drugs can be controlled and made a constant release for up to 24 hours. The release of the drug from this osmotic pump is independent of pH and gut motility. The antihypertensive drug metoprolol can be used in such a dosage form. A modified release tablet contains a greater amount of drugs than does a conventional form. For example, in the case of diclofenac tablet, the conventional form contains 50 mg whereas the modified release tablet contains 100 mg. There is usually a great variation in the rate of release of drugs among individuals, and even in the same individual at different times. If the release of a drug from a modified release tablet preparation is more rapid than is assumed, too much drug may be absorbed too quickly and thus lead to adverse effects. On the other hand, if the rate of release is slower than expected, amounts of drugs may be provided that is inadequate to produce the desired therapeutic effect. If a modified release drug leaves the intestine before all the drugs have been delivered for absorption, an unused portion will be excreted in the feces. The term pill is still popularly known to us. Once the people's idea was to use the pill in every ill. Nowadays the term has been only used in contraceptive preparations such as combination pill, mini pill, and the morning after pill. Capsule. The capsule is a solid dosage form in which one or more active ingredients with, without inert substances are enclosed within a small shell or container generally prepared from gelatin. It is intended for oral administration. The use of a capsule overcomes the problem of disintegration, stability, or taste. To make a capsule it is not necessary to use water, which may cause loss of potency of the drug. Once a drug is enclosed within a capsule, one cannot experience the taste of the drug. When a capsule comes in contact with the gastrointestinal fluid, the gelatin starts to dissolve. As the aqueous fluids invade the capsule contents, rapidly swell, causing the capsule to burst and discharge its contents into the gastrointestinal fluid. The capsule is more expensive than the tablet. Composition of capsule In addition to the active ingredients, the capsule usually contains diluent, lubricant, and preservative. Diluent 
lactose is added to fill the capsule and also causes rapid dispersal of the drug into the gastrointestinal fluid. Lubricant. Magnesium stearate is used to ensure flow of powder during filling into the capsule. Preservative. Soft gelatin shell may contain a preservative to prevent the growth of fungi. The commonly used preservatives are methyl and propylparabens, and sorbic acid. Types of capsules The capsules are of two types hard and soft capsules. In addition, the capsule may be modified release or implant. Most of the capsules are of hard types. Hard capsule Hard capsule shell has two parts the body and a tightly fitting cap. The diameter of the cap is slightly larger than the diameter of the body. The gelatin capsule is colorless. It is made colorful or opaque for differentiation by adding a colorant. An the opaque producing substance, such as titanium dioxide. The capsule may be imprinted with a monograph of the manufacturer, the strength of the drug in the capsule, a code designation for product identification, or some other symbol to distinguish from. The size of the hard capsule ranges from 12 to 28 millimeters. The selection of the size of a capsule depends on the amount of drug. Larger capsules are available for veterinary use. The form of drug within the hard capsule may be either powder or granule. The total weight of the drug varies ranging from 65 to 1000 mg. When the amount of drug to be administered in a single capsule is large enough to fill a capsule, a diluent may not be required. Soft capsule. The soft capsule is prepared from the shell of gelatin to which glycerin or sorbitol has been added to render the gelatin elastic or plastic like. These are various in shapes such as round, oval, oblong, tube, or suppository. Each contains either liquid, suspension, pastry material, or dry powder. The necessity of using a soft capsule is to seal the liquid medication within the capsule. To prevent the medication especially susceptible to deterioration in the presence of air, and to use the volatile medication. In addition, the soft capsule is easily swallowed. The drugs prepared in the soft capsule are vitamin A, vitamin E, and demiclocycline. Modified Release Capsule the modified release capsule is either a hard or soft capsule. The drug in granule form present within the capsule is coated with a variety of substances that are designed to dissolve at different times. So, there is a continuous release of a small amount of drugs. The period of drug release ranges from 2 to 12 hours depending on the coating used. For example, iron salt available as the ordinary tablet is taken orally twice or thrice daily. The frequency of administration may be reduced to once daily using slow-release preparation. The slow-release formulation is preferable because it improves patient compliance and reduces gastrointestinal adverse effects. Implant capsule Sometimes capsule is placed subcutaneously to provide a slow release of the drug. For example, Levonorgestrel, popularly known to people as Norplant, offers long-term contraception, about five years, by using this method. It consists of six capsules, 2.4 mm in diameter and 34 mm in length for each capsule, containing 36 mg of synthetic progestin Levonorgestrel. These capsules are inserted in a plane beneath the skin of the upper arm by a small incision and special injector. The implant capsule is dependable and reversible. 
there is no question of patient compliance. Powder The word powder is derived from the Latin word pulvis. It is a mixture of finely divided drugs and or chemicals in dry form. Drugs in powder form are available for both external and internal uses. The advantages of powder as a dosage form are a. Flexibility in compounding and b. Relatively good chemical stability. The powder is not suitable for dispensing unpleasant tasting drug. Powder for external uses Powder for external use is also known as dusting powder. The dusting powder is a locally applied non-toxic preparation and should have particle size of less than 100 mesh. It includes starch, talc, and zinc stearate. Dusting powders are applied to various parts of the body as lubricants, protective absorbents, antiseptics, and antipruritic. It should not be used on open wound unless the powder is sterilized. Powder for internal uses The powder for internal use is designed for oral or parenteral administration. Some powders are dispensed by the pharmacist to the patient in bulk quantities. Others are provided in divided forms individually packaged portions, depending primarily on the use, dose, or potency of powder. Each dose is separately wrapped in powder or sealed into a sachet. It is intended to be dissolved in water prior to administration. Antacids and laxative powders are administered in these forms. The powder for injection is a sterile solid substance to be dissolved or suspended by adding a prescribed volume of appropriate sterile fluid. The solution or suspension is prepared immediately before use to avoid deterioration of the ingredients on storage. Some drugs, such as disodium chromoglycate, are supplied in hard capsules and are inhaled from a device which breaks the capsule and allows the patient to inhale the powder. This type of insufflations is used mainly for drug delivery into the respiratory tract by inhalation. Granule is a small irregular particle ranging from 0.5 to 2 mm in diameter. It is more stable physically and chemically than is the corresponding powder from which it is prepared. Some granules are administered by pouring it within the capsule. It may be placed on the tongue and swallowed with water. Some antibiotics, such as ampicillin, unstable in aqueous solution are prepared as granules for reconstitution with purified water just prior to dispensing. The granules not only contain the active ingredient but also the colorant, flavorant, and other pharmaceutic ingredients. Ispagula husk is also available as effervescent granules. Suppository the word suppository is derived from the Latin supinare, meaning, to place under, as derived from sub, under, and panare, to place. It is a solid medicated preparation designed for insertion into the rectum. It is tapered at one or both ends usually weigh between 1 and 4 gm. Rectal suppositories are shaped like a bullet, torpedo, or little finger. It is usually 32 mm in length and is cylindrical. Usually cocoa butter, glycerinated gelatin, polyethylene glycol are used as suppository bases. These bases are non-toxic, non-irritant to the mucous membrane, and melt quickly at body temperature. Suppository should be kept in a well-closed container and stored at temperature not exceeding 30 degrees Celsius. Drugs in suppositories are used for systemic or local effect. Analgesics, aminophilin, and sedatives are used for systemic effect. Example of local effect is the use of drug for the treatment of constipation or hemorrhoid. Bisicodal or glycerin suppository is used to relieve from constipation. Suppository should be moistened with water before use. The solid medicated preparation designed for insertion into the vagina is called pessary. It melts or dissolves and exerts a local or systemic effect.
There are three types of pessaries molded pessary, compressed pessary, vaginal tablet, and vaginal capsule. Molded pessary is cone-shaped and is prepared in a similar way to molded suppository. Compressed pessary is of different shapes and is prepared by compression in a similar way to oral tablet. Vaginal capsule is similar to soft gelatin oral capsule. It differs only in size and shape. Methylparaben is used as a preservative. Others Others include ocular insert, intrauterine device and transdermal patch. Ocular insert Ocular insert is a special device for modified release of pilocarpine at the eye for the treatment of glaucoma. Traditionally 2% pilocarpine eye drops are used every 6 hourly. To replace this method, Ocular insert can be placed either under the eyelid or in the cold de sac of the eye. It consists of a wafer-like pilocarpine core held between two transparent rate-controlling membranes, ethylene vinyl acetate copolymer. Pilocarpine is released at a rate of 20 or 40 pg per hour for one week. A single weekly administration of drug is obviously more convenient than periodic daily administration of eye drops. intrauterine device. This is a small, T-shaped, flexible, multi-component unit consisting of a polymeric membrane-enclosed drug reservoir that delivers progesterone, 65 nanograms per day, to the lining of the uterus for more than one year. Within the drug reservoir, progesterone is present with barium sulfate and silicone oil. Transdermal patch. Transdermal patchy is a multi-layer disc comprising a reservoir of drugs sandwiched between an impermeable backing membrane and a rate-controlling microporous membrane. There is an adhesive gel on the dermal side of the patch which serves to secure the system to intact skin. It is usually applied to the post-auricular area of the skin. The rate of drug absorption is controlled by the patch and not the skin. Drugs being considered for transdermal delivery or scopolamine, to counteract motion sickness, clonidine, to control hypertension, estradiol, for the treatment of postmenopausal syndrome, and nitroglycerin, for treatment and prevention of angina. Drugs suitable for this type of administration should have molecular weights below 800 to 1000, adequate solubility in oil and water, good skin permeability, and no history of skin irritation. In case of scopolamine, 500 pg of drug is to be released within 72 hours when in contact with skin. Semi-solid dosage form Semi-solid dosage form of drug is presented as ointment, paste, and cream. Here, the active ingredients dissolved in a suitable base. Some excipients such as emulsifier, viscosity increasing agent, antimicrobial agent, antioxidant and stabilizing agent may be used. The following points should be considered before selecting a base A. Does it irritate or sensitize the skin? B. Does it delay the wound healing? C. Should it be smooth, stable, inert, and odorless? Semi-solid dosage form should normally be of such a consistency that it spreads and softens. Cream is more acceptable than ointment for cosmetic purpose. Ointment Ointment is a semi-solid greasy preparation which is normally anhydrous and insoluble in water. It is more occlusive than cream. Ointment is used for external application to the skin or mucous membrane. It usually contains medicinal substances. However, there may be some ointments without any medicinal substance. The effectiveness of drug and the absorption of it through skin may be superior when using a hydrocarbon base. Petroleum jelly is used for moisturizing the skin as because it is occlusive and increases the hydration of skin by reducing the rate of loss of surface water. 
suitable preservatives are used and may vary from preparation to preparation. Paste Paste is a semi-solid preparation to be intended for external application to the skin. It differs from ointment primarily in that it generally contains a larger percentage of solid material and as a consequence are thicker and stiffer than ointment. Paste is generally more absorptive and less greasy than ointment prepared with the same component. Paste is preferred over ointment for acute lesions that have a tendency toward crusting, vesiculation, or oozing. It should not be applied to hairy parts of the body due to its stiffness and impenetrability. Some examples of pastes are zinc oxide paste, triamacinolone acetonide dental paste. Cream Cream is a semi-solid preparation consisting of opaque emulsion system and is essentially miscible with the skin secretion. It should be sterile one when intended to be used on open wound. Cream is cosmetically more acceptable than ointment as it is less greasy and easier to apply. It may be either oil in water, aqueous cream, or water in oil, oily cream, type. Aqueous cream includes saving cream, hand cream, and foundation cream. It is relatively non-greasy. It may be used to moisture the skin or to deliver drug for transdermal absorption. Oily cream includes cold cream and emollient cream liquid dosage for liquid dosage form of drug is presented as solution, suspension, and emulsion. Several terminologies used for liquid preparation in clinical practice are mixture, syrup, elixir, lotion, tincture, linctus, etc. Though the acceptability of oral liquid preparation is more, there remains a problem of taking accurate dose. Once the container is opened, it must be used within a certain period. Solution Solution is a homogeneous liquid preparation containing one or more dissolved ingredients. It may be used either internally or externally. Some antibiotics such as cloxacillin, nafcillin, Benzyl penicillin are relatively unstable in aqueous solution. So, these antibiotics are supplied to the patients as dry powder or granule in combination with sweetening agent, suitable buffer, flavorant, colorant, and preservative. Flavorant and colorant are used to make the medication more palatable and attractive to the patient. When these antibiotics are prepared into solution by adding water the prepared products are suitable for use for a period of up to 14 days when kept at 4 degrees Celsius. Thus, this period is sufficient to complete the medication. If the drug remains after the patient completes his course of treatment, he should be instructed to discard the remaining portion, which would be unfit for use at a later date. Aqueous solution for intravenous infusion is free from pyrogens and usually made isotonic with blood. Buffering agent is not added to the solution. Aqueous solution for external use is nasal solution, otic solution, and eye drop. An example of nasal solution is ephedrine nasal drop, which is used to reduce nasal congestion. Examples of otic solution are glycerin otic solution and corticosteroid otic solution. Suspension A suspension is a heterogeneous system of liquid dosage form of drug in which the finely divided solid particles ranging from 0.5 to 5.0 pm are suspended or dispersed in a liquid vehicle. The solid micro-sized particle constitutes the dispersed or internal phase whereas the liquid vehicle constitutes the continuous phase. The suspension is chemically more stable than the solution and is mainly used for oral administration, external application or parenteral use. A suspension is an ideal dosage form for patient who has difficulty in swallowing tablet or capsule. 
Oral suspension is made palatable by adding some sweetening and flavoring agents and thereby masking the unpleasant taste and odor of medicament. The solid particles remain suspended in the liquid medium by adding some suspending agents, which will reduce the interfacial tension between two phases as well as increase the viscosity of liquid vehicles. In an ideal suspension, the particles should not aggregate and should remain uniformly distributed throughout the dispersion. Practically this situation is seldom realized, so it is desirable to get a suspension where the particles do settle slowly and should be readily redispersed on minimum shaking. Suitable preservative should be incorporated in order to MI. Nemise microbial contamination. The suspension prepared for external use should have very fine particle size to avoid gritty feeling to the skin. Examples of suspensions given by the oral route are antacids, cotramoxazole, and benzoyl metronidazole. Occasionally they may be in dry form and to be made suspension by adding water before use for example, oral antibiotic syrup. The suspension can also be administered by intramuscular or subcutaneous injection. Another important consideration in case of suspension for injection is its pH. If the suspension is too acidic or too alkaline it may cause irritation and even tissue damage at the site of injection. Emulsion An emulsion is a two-phase system prepared by intimate mixture of two immiscible liquids, one of which is uniformly dispersed as globules throughout the other. The system is stabilized by the presence of an emulsifying agent. The emulsifying agent reduces the interfacial tension between the two phases, for example, aqueous phase and oily phase thus make them miscible with each other and form a stable emulsion. The type of emulsion produced also depends on the type of emulsifying agents. To prepare a stable emulsion two or more emulsifying agents are usually used. The common emulsifying agents are acacia, gelatin, tween 80, span 80, and span 20. The particle diameter of the dispersed phase generally extends from about 0. 1 to 100 pm. The emulsion may be of two types, oil in water and water in oil emulsion. When the oil phase is dispersed as globules throughout an aqueous phase, the system is called oil in water emulsion. Benzyl benzoate lotion is an example of oil in water emulsion. When the oil phase serves as the emulsion phase, water in oil emulsion is produced. The emulsion for oral administration is usually oil in water type and requires the use of an oil in water emulsifying agent. These include synthetic non-ionic surface acting agents such as acacia, tragacanth, and gelatin. Oil in water type emulsion is preferred for internal use because of unpleasant taste and odor are masked by emulsification and the oil being in a finely dispersed state is more quickly absorbed into the body. For example, Cod liver oil and castor oil belong to this group. The activity of certain drugs can be increased and the action can be prolonged by emulsifying the drugs in a suitable vehicle. The emulsion containing amino acid, fat, carbohydrate, and vitamin in sterile condition can be used as total parenteral nutrition, TPN, to patient who is unable to take food by oral route. The emulsion for external uses may be oil in water or water in oil type, but water in oil emulsion is used almost exclusively for external use. The aqueous phase of emulsion favors the growth of microorganisms and it is necessary to add chloracresol, benzoic acid, sorbic acid, or salicylic acid as preservative. Gaseous dosage form Gaseous preparations are available in gas form present within aerosol, gas, or as volatile liquid.
Porous salt. Therapeutically active liquid or solid can be formulated in this form by making colloidal dispersion. The active ingredient when packaged in pressurized dispenser is popularly known as aerosol. The container is so designed that, by depressing a valve, some of the contents are expelled due to pressure inside the container. The large expansion of the propellant at room temperature and atmospheric pressure produces a dispersion of the drug in air. Fluorinated hydrocarbons, nitrogen, and carbon dioxide are usually used as propellant in the formulation of aerosol. Pressure ranging from 1 to 6 atmospheres at room temperature can be achieved by varying the proportions of the various propellants. Aerosol spray is of several types surface spray, spray on dusting powder, F. OAM dispenser, and metered dose aerosol. Surface spray produces droplets of 100 pm or more. It may be used to relieve muscle ache, irritation of bites and stings, as surface disinfectant, as wound or burn dressing. Foam spray is used for some spermicidal preparations. Metered dose aerosol is used for the delivery of glycerol trinitrate in droplet form to the buccal mucosa. The use of aerosol is continually increasing since it frequently offers distinct advantages over other dosage forms. These are a, Antiseptic materials can be sprayed onto the abraded skin. B. Minimum irritation. C. Administration of the drug in the formulation. Via the respiratory tract may increase the efficiency of the drug. D. Protection from contamination. And E. Regulation of dosage by the use of metered valve. Gas. Only a few gases such as oxygen, nitrous oxide, and carbon dioxide are used in clinical practices. Volatile liquid halothane, ether, and chloroform are present in liquid form and are used during induction and maintenance of general anesthesia. Liposome-based drug formulation Liposomes are water-filled, vesicular structures composed of several phospholipid layers surrounding an aqueous core, and with the outer shell capsule of providing directions to specific target cells, for example, tumors. They will concentrate the drugs in cells of the reticuloendothelial system of the liver and spleen, and will reduce drug intake in the heart, kidney, and gastrointestinal tract. Several drugs, amphotericin B, doxorubicin, tretinoin, vincristine, cisplatin, nistatin, prostaglandin E, and amicacin, containing liposome system have been developed for the delivery of drugs by various routes of administration including inhalation, ocular, injectable, dermal, and oral. The use of doxorubicin in liposome reduces cardiac toxicity. Liposome-associated amphotericin B reduces nephrotoxicity and other adverse effects. The size of the liposome varies from 0.3 to 10 microns. The size of liposome influences both their distribution in the body and their deposition. For example, following injection, large-sized liposome can have the tendency to deposit in the lungs whereas smaller particles may concentrate in other body sites, such as the liver. 